In this tutorial, we'll look at electric fields, forces, energy, and voltage, specifically in a uniform field. Consider a rock on a staircase. We're near the surface of the Earth here, so we're going to consider that we're in a uniform gravitational field. G equals 9.8 newtons per kilogram, or 9.8 meters per second squared that we used more in the motion questions. Both are perfectly correct uses of the same value. Given our uniform field, we know that we can determine the gravitational force on this rock as Fg equals m times g, the mass of the rock times our gravitational field strength g. At this point, let's bring in our similar electric version of this uniform field. Two plates, like in a capacitor, with the positive plate on top here, and the negative plate on the bottom. We have our electric field, E, going from the top plate, away from the positive, towards the negative, the bottom plate. We consider our field strength to be uniform, and the units would be newtons per coulomb. Let's put a positively charged particle right in here. And, given our uniform electric field, we know that we can determine the electrostatic force on this particle Q times E, the charge of our particle here, times the electric field strength E. So let's stop and compare for a moment. Both of these equations for force give us a force in newtons. Both of these equations have a field strength, G for the gravitational field strength and E for the electric field strength. And then in both we have an extra characteristic specific to the rock or the charged particle. Mass for the rock in kilograms, or charge for the particle in coulombs. So, back to the staircase. Let's consider the potential energy of a rock in joules. And we remember that potential energy here is the force of gravity times the displacement or the movement of that rock, the work to get it from the bottom to this stair. But since we're close to Earth, we can replace the Fg with Mg, a nice uniform field. And since the work would be upward against gravity, we'll replace the D with a H for height. Mgh. Should look familiar. Switching over to our charge particle, the potential energy is Fe times D. The work required to get to this position from the bottom or a reference. And since we're in a uniform field, we can replace Fe with Q times E, the charge times our electric field. So we have QED. Again, let's consider some similarities between these equations. We have a field strength, G over here, and E over here. We have a displacement, H over here, and D over here. And then we have an extra characteristic, specific to the rock or charged particle, mass for the rock in kilograms, or charge for the particle in coulombs. Moving on, let's consider the potential of each. Now, again, not potential energy, it's just potential or potential difference. Although not a value we've used a lot in the mechanical world, we can introduce the idea of gravitational potential difference. It's like potential energy, but we take the mass of the rock away. We consider the position as the main factor here. So we don't specify the mass of the rock. For instance, if we took our potential energy and we divided out the mass, we have g times h. So if the unit for potential energy was joules, and we divide out the mass, kilograms, then we could say our gravitational potential will be in joules per kilogram. So if the first step is one meter high, then it would have a gravitational potential of g times one, or 9.8 joules per kilogram. The second step, being two meters high, would have a gravitational potential of g times 2, or 19.6 joules per kilogram. Third step, g times 3, 29.4 joules per kilogram, and so on. 
So this potential doesn't depend on the mass. For example, our potential at this third step is 29.4 joules per kilogram. If it's a one kilogram rock, then one kilogram times 29.4 joules per kilogram, and the kilograms cancel, and we have 29.4 joules. If it were a two kilogram rock, then two kilograms times 29.4 joules per kilogram, again, kilograms cancel, 58.8 joules. So we note that gravitational potential is kind of useful. If we have a gravitational potential, V subscript G, then we know what the potential for energy is at this position, and all we need is the mass. So let's take this idea and we'll switch over to our electrical plates. Electric potential difference. Again, like potential energy, but without the, what do you think? It won't be without the mass, it'll be without the charge, right? So dividing out the charge here, we have V equals potential energy over Q. Note that we could put a little subscript E with a V, but with voltage, it's so often used that we just skip that. And everyone knows that a capital V is indicating voltage or electric potential difference. So let's mark some levels or steps in our electric field. And if our electric field is five newtons per coulomb, for example, and the first step is one meter high, then it would have an electric potential or voltage here of E times one or five joules per coulomb. The second step, two meters high, would have a voltage of E times two, or 10 joules per coulomb. The third step, E times three, 15 joules per coulomb, and so on. Again, this potential value, or voltage, doesn't depend on the charge. For example, our voltage on this third step is 15 joules per coulomb or 15 volts. To determine the potential energy of a particular charge at this position, we need to specify the charge, and that's it. Potential energy equals Q times V. If it's a one coulomb charge, then one coulomb times 15 joules per coulomb, the coulombs cancel and we have 15 joules. If it's a two coulomb charge, then two coulombs times 15 joules per coulomb, the C's cancel again, and we have 30 joules. So, if we have the voltage, then we know what our potential for energy is at this position. All we need is the charge, and then we can specify the energy at this given position.